Morning. Morning. How's everybody doing? Woo! Everybody got up on the right side of the bed? Yeah. yeah. Or maybe the left? Uh, excuses. Excuses, excuses. How many of you have ever said an excuse or, or made up some kind of excuse? And you know, excuses are just that, right? They're just excuses. And when I thought about this way of how, how, um, how many people have made excuses this week? It just kind of, I just, you know, I just shake my head. Uh, as some of you know, we're doing some remodeling projects at the house, and uh, we had, Anita had hired a guy to come in and uh, paint our house, our garage, actually. And he never showed up. Oh, no. And uh, what was the excuse? Um, well, my phone went dead. <laughs> now, uh, how many people have phones, cell phones, uh, and how many of you, uh, if the phone goes down, you have a spouse or a friend that you could say, can I borrow your phone, my phone's dead, huh? So I, I think uh, the, the excuse of, oh, my phone went dead, is not a very good excuse, it's just an excuse. Uh, and and I, I keep on hearing these excuses that people make. And I have made excuses myself, so don't get me wrong. Um, but the thing is, that's what excuses are, right? And, and you know what? I, I thought, you know, just do a little Googling and find out what does the Bible say about excuses. And you know what? There's a plenty of excuses in the Bible, too. Did you know that? Uh, Uh-oh. No. Um, one example would be the, the invitation to the, to the bank. I don't know what's happening on my clicker. Uh, I forgot to check the battery. Well, that's just an excuse. So I need to go to It's one of those mornings, you know, where technology, uh, you know how technology is. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and and uh, my battery was dead on my microphone, and now uh, my clicker is not working right. But, you know, uh, that's just an excuse that we're going to move on. Because Satan will always do something to have excuses for you to make, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Are you guys awake this morning? Yeah! Okay. So I need to go ahead and forward to the next slide. Uh, I, I looked at some of these different um, slides uh, on the internet, and I thought that was pretty cool. If it is important to you, you, you will find a way. If not, you'll find an excuse. Next one. Excuses, results, take your pick. You want to get things done? Then find a way to do it. Uh, where was it? I, I heard uh, this person talk, and uh, he says, you know what? Oh, that was at the Global Leadership Summit, right? Go figure it out. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how to do everything. Go figure it out. That was Bill Hyde was telling his, uh, uh, Bill Hyde was dad, telling him, you know, go do something. And he's asking, well, how am I supposed to do it? Go figure it out. <laughs> you see, the thing is that, again, in life, we can make all kinds of excuses or we can go figure out how to get the job accomplished. And when we figure it out, guess what? We get results, right? Next one. When you lose all of your excuses, guess what happens? You will find results. So go to the banquet that we, I was talking about earlier. And here's this uh, parable that Jesus is saying, right? He says, when one of those at a table with him heard this, he said, Jesus, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent out, he sent his servants to, to tell those uh, who had been invited, come. Everything is ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first, I have bought a field. And I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Hmm. Uh, did he know that the banquet is coming? I mean, you know, how many of you, when someone invites you to a wedding, they send out this thing called an invitation, and, and they, they have 
this thing on it says RSVP, right? It means uh, respond, s'il vous plaît. It's a French word for please let us know if you're coming or not. In fact, I did get a uh, RSVP notice, uh, invitation to a luau for my nephew's, uh, my, my niece's son's first uh, birthday. And in Hawaii, the first birthdays are really important, so they're throwing this big luau. Uh, and it says RSVP. You know, I didn't let them know right away because I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it or not, but I was making plans on going. And I finally was able to RSVP, let them know that I'm coming. Again, I do have my one-way ticket to Hawaii. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> Aloha! <laughs>
last eight days. What? In fact, today, this past week, there was this little tiny thing going across my grass, and I got the shovel out. <laughs> Two of them in my yard. And I can imagine Moses running from that snake. And then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by his tail. Now, I don't know about you, but I would never pick up a snake no matter what kind of snake it is. I would. How many of you would like to handle snakes? Anybody? Oh, well, those are the weirdos. <laughs> snake and it turned back into the staff in his hand. Now I don't know about you but I think maybe maybe if God was in God, my, my very presence and telling me what to do maybe I would listen to him because you know if, if I got to it, God would heal it, right? Sure. This said the Lord is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, put your hand inside your cloak so that, so Moses put his hand in his cloak and then when he took it out, the skin was leprous. It had become white as snow. Now I don't know if you ever seen leprosy, but uh, I know at that time in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, leprosy was a dreaded disease. And so you can imagine Moses sticking his hand in his cloak and bringing it out. And what a shock would that have been. Now put it back in your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. Now, something that I don't really understand is, is this miracle of the snake and then his hand turned to the leprosy and restored being in God's very presence and, and Moses still doesn't want to listen to what God has. He's still making excuses. And then the Lord said, if you do not believe, if they do not, do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they, they may, may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground the water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Moses said to the Lord, Pardon me, pardon your servant, Lord. Uh, I have never been eloquent, and neither in the past nor since I have spoken, uh, you have spoken to your servant, I am slow <laughs> in, 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 in speech. You know, I, I stutter. Again, making excuses. I mean, here again I say, he's, he's seen God work miracles. God's the one that's telling him. God wouldn't ask anybody to do something if he didn't think that person could do it with his own power, right? God's power. But Moses is again, he's making excuses. The Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go! I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord, please send someone else. There's all kinds of jobs that we get asked to do, right? And we always say, why me, Lord? Why not Joe Blow? Always finding somebody else to take what God has asked us to do. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses and he said, What about your, your brother Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. He's already on his way to meet you and he will be glad to see you. Another one, Jeremiah. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. They didn't 
did somebody else just say that? <laughs> I am too young. Does that sound like an excuse to you? How many times have you said, I'm too young? I'm too old. Go find somebody else. You know, if, if you're feeling something right now, you know, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit working in your life and He says, you know what? I've called you to do something and I want you to respond to my call. And you're probably saying, I think you're talking about the guy sitting next to me. God calls each and every Christian to respond to what He has desired for you to do to further His kingdom. The invitation has been out there, but you know what? We are stubborn and we make all kinds of excuses why we don't do the Lord's will. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. If the Lord is asking you to do something, would he ask you to do something if he hasn't always already planned to give you the means to accomplish his purpose? See, today I have appointed you of the nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear you down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Another one, Gideon. I mean, a lot of times we like to think of the, the great things that these great men did, but then we kind of forget that they were people just like you and me, full of excuses, right? And when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Uh, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? We are all his wonders. Where are all his wonders and our ancestors told us about when they said, Did, you not, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Gideon replied, If thou I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. You know, I could be just dreaming. Uh, you know, all of us, you know, we, we, we have our dreams, right? We, we, we think that God is wanting to do a mighty work in our lives. Or maybe God is telling you to do a mighty work. But you're making all the excuses. You know, all the great people that have done great things for God's kingdom, I bet you they made some excuses. When I think about uh, Dave Parrish and, and having to go to uh, a jungle to work with the, the people there to translate the Bible into a language that has never been translated, the Bible has never been translated, it's, it's now exciting to see that the people read the Word of God in their own language. And I think sometimes we take it for granted. Uh, you know, most of us have three or four Bibles at home and we don't even open up and these guys don't even have them and they're just yearning to have the Word of God where they can read it for themselves. Not just having someone say, well, this is what the Bible says. You know, how can they learn about Jesus loves me, this I know. I mean, we all grow up with that, but these people don't know what it's like to have the Bible in their own language. And I think of all the different missionaries, you know, Dale, Mason, Dale and Hugh Mason, Ron and Ellen Ritchie, Wing Wong, Wing and Kamina Wong. They could all make excuses. Especially leaving family. 
to go into a place where they know nothing about because God called them to do it. And because God called them to do it, they knew that God was going to use their weakness for His glory. And God has done a mighty thing among all the missionaries that have gone and sacrificed their lives. And when I think about what it takes to sacrifice, to, to go somewhere where God sends you, how much it is when it's their whole life. It's not just, well, oh, I'll go for a couple years. But when you go in the Lord's might what, and do what the Lord tells you to do, there's nothing can stop you. And you know, it's not a, a burden. It's not toilsome. It's a joy. That we can serve the Lord in whatever He has called us to do. Because sometimes when I think about these people that have left their families and gone a long distance and, and maybe come back five years or maybe some ten years to come and visit their family. But you know, they have a, a higher call. That is something that is far more important than this temporary age that we live in. Because as we all know, this, this short time that we know of from the time that we're born to the time that we die is just a blink of an eye. What are we called to do? Every single Christian is called to serve Him in one capacity or another. Everybody knows the story, right? The sheep and the goats. Where Jesus says, When the Son of Man comes in glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate the people one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, and take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. And I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and and you looked after me, I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And the righteous will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we, we see you a stranger and invite you in or need clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick in prison or go to visit you? And the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did, for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed. Or others verses say, you workers of iniquity, you wicked people, depart from me. Inter into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick in person and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry? thirsty or stranger and eat clothes sick or in prison and did not help you. And he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for the one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. <coughs> When I think about, again, the, all the excuses that we can make, right? We all can make excuses. One of the 
persons that had all the excuses in the world and realized that the excuses weren't going to do him any good. That's the Apostle Paul, right? He says, even if I choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain. So no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. Or because of these surpassing great revelations. Therefore, I, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. And I like this verse. But he said to me, Grace is enough. That's all you need. For my power is made perfect. In what? In my strength? I mean, how, how much is my strength according to God? Nothing. But in my weakness, He is made strong. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest upon me. None of us, no matter how great we may think we are or all the talents that we might have, none of us have the power to do God's will on our own strength. So if you're making excuses why you're not doing what God has called you to do, Guess what? In God's sight, those are just excuses. If you really desire to do God's will, you will do it. And God will use His strength to do His mighty power through you. And will just amaze you. And you know what? You can go through anything in life. When you acknowledge God's power working in your life, it will energize you. Because you allow in the Holy Spirit who lives within you, and sometimes I don't think people understand, that when you become a Christian, you have God living in you. And if you have God living in you, and God has given you a purpose of life to do His will, He will equip you to do mighty things. How many of you would like to be a Moses? A Jeremiah? A Gideon? A David? And we can go on and on and on. They all made excuses. And if you're making excuses, that's all it is. It's excuses. And you will not be doing what God has called. in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So, what is your excuse? I pray that Because excuses is really a sin. When God calls you to do something and you don't do it, that is turning your back against Him. So we have a song of imitation. Every Sunday we do a song of imitation. Imagine that. And I know some of you feel a tug at your heart when we have that imitation time after you heard God's word, 
to do something about it. Stop making excuses about what, you know, whatever your excuse might be. Well, I don't want other people to know that I'm struggling in my life. You know what? What happened to uh, confess your sins before others? Let people know that you're having a struggle in your life. Just because you're maybe one of the leaders in the church, you know, you know what I would do if we as leaders would come forward and say, I struggle with this issue, will you pray for me? It would invite other people who are struggling to do the same thing. We're going to sing the song, Everybody Ought to Know. I, I really love that song. And do you really believe that? Don't sing the song if you don't really believe it. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Say it after me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you believe that? God's desire is that none should perish but all come to repentance. And God is wanting you to be a part of that plan. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. While we're standing, 